Hello everyone, welcome to this session. I am Sadashiva. This is uh, Rama. We both uh, work for HP Enterprise at uh, Sunnyvale location. Today's session is about uh, Trove installation, configuration, and debugging the installation issues. Uh, before we actually start the installation, we'd like to uh, go over the, some of the concepts of the Trove. Before that, I would like to know how many of you are already using the Trove here? Can you raise the hands? Okay, very few. So, I assume rest all uh, new to this session. So, this session is basically uh, installation, configuration and uh, uh, debugging. So, this is uh, the Trove statement. Provide scalable, reliable cloud database and provisioning functional functionality for both relational and non-relational database engines and work continue to improve its fully featured and extensible open open source framework. A Trove uh, mission statement. So, the Trove is basically it exposes the rest RESTful API and it stores the persistent data in the uh, infrastructure database. It maintains its own database. When we are configuring it keeps its metadata into the infrastructure database. So, it has uh, various uh, components. Uh, basically, I will go through the, uh, I want to show the uh, picture before I go all these uh, concepts. So, so, I think it, the one slide is, architecture slide is missing. So, one thing, uh, give me one second, please. Cool. So, it has various uh, components. Uh, one is the Trove API services, which is basically, a, it uh, provides the RESTful API and it implements the WSGI. Uh, when the request comes from the user, it receives the request and uh, it sends the request to, for the authentication. Uh, to the authentication server, whichever is uh, responsible to authenticate the user. So, typically a, a keystone here. So, it has also uh, another component called uh, task manager. It listens uh, to the, on the, onto the messaging queue. Request will post the request uh, to the task manager. Task manager execute this request by invoking the appropriate uh, routines. Uh, this is the configuration file, throw task manager con file to uh, define where the, which one is the uh, entry point. Task manager handles uh, uh, some of the operations, uh, instance creation, deletion, interactions with the other services uh, like Nova, Cinder, Swift and all. So, another service called uh, conductor service, throw conductor receives updates, uh, various types of status updates from the guest agents. Some cases it has to update the infrastructure database. It always keeps listening to the, uh, onto the messaging queue. It listens to the, uh, it keeps checking the guest agents uh, heartbeats. And this is the configuration file where uh, you can go and modify some of the configuration stuff for the conductor services. Trove strategies uh, are the ones uh, where uh, new, uh, the developers, uh, they can implement uh, their uh, new implementations. Uh, it has the kind of a specifications we can go through. Uh, if you wanted to integrate or if you wanted to support any new data store, new database, uh, this is the place where you wanted to look into it. So, the, there is another thing called Trove extensions. It's a basically a Trove commands. So we call it as a uh, Trove calls it as a um, extensions. Basically, a Trove database uh, list, do, uh, database create, Trove database create. These are the commands uh, uh, it supports basically. So, next, uh, uh, this is another important thing. Uh, uh, they call it as uh, flavors, where we define how much memory. Uh, you want to use how much disk space, number of CPUs and all. 
basically whenever uh, when we try to create the instance uh, we specify the flavor when we pick this flavor equal to something say if my flavor name is a, a small or middle or high uh, so you define uh, the spy, the all these uh, parameters uh, with that name when you are creating the instance we'll give the demo when we are giving the demo we'll give we'll use the command we'll, we'll show you the command that will tell you basically uh, uh, draw create uh, my instance or and the flavor equal to uh, a small so what is small is uh, you can define all these things so draw also supports the backup and restore it, it, it is not responsible to perform actual uh, backup and restore it supports uh, the actual data store to perform the backup and restore it can launch the new instances from the backup also you can backup then you create a new instance from that backup can be backups can be incremental you know that one so and uh, this is the configuration file throw guest agent.conf where you can modify any backup and uh, uh, restore related configuration files so replication replica kind of mirroring so it won't actually do the uh, it won't actually perform the replication but it supports whatever the data, actual data store is responsible to do the uh, replication so this is the draw create name of the instance of an example how do you replicate so there is something called uh, a configuration group configuration group uh, basically you have a set of parameters uh, while we, when you are configuring your instance you can they can use the set of parameters to configure your instance uh, you create a configuration group uh, then you assign attach the configuration group to the uh, instance basically so here it mentions during the launch of guest instance the task manager renders the configuration file to provide the guest so it has the uh, key value pair key, key value pairs uh, data there configuration con uh, group can be attached to the database instance so in this one uh, throw list get the instance id throw configuration list get the configuration group id and attach throw configuration attach instance id then the configuration group id so configuration when you try to group uh, create the group it has a name value and data store name it creates with the id you attach that id to the instance id these are the few uh, data stores uh, that are supported data store is nothing but a database can be uh, adbms uh, relational or non relational uh, to name few uh, mysql mongo redis Apache, uh, Cassandra, Couchbase, Percona, PostgreSQL, uh, SQL, Redis, MariaDB. Uh, the first three they also support the clustering. Cluster is nothing but a group of instances where uh, the data can be replicated into the multiple instances. One can be primary, the other two can be say, other two can be the slaves. If you are creating a MySQL or a Mongo uh, cluster with the three instances. one can be primary uh, two other other two can be uh, uh, slaves in mongo case you can read from the primary uh, you can write to the primary you can read from all the three in order to write it has to be a prime primary node all the cases in the mongo case so hp uh, has also vertica we have not listed here so these are just to name few we there are many uh, data stores that are supported user can easily go and uh, write their you know apis consume these uh, api to write their own uh, plugin to uh, support their data data stores so uh, now we will start the actual installation uh, and see how oh, how it goes if if people have any questions uh, we can take the questions now or we can take later also okay um so we'll talk about uh, how we install i mean one of the big thing ever okay you know i want to try throw and how do i get uh, to install it now uh, if you go and look in the wiki page or google search for throw installation you'll get actually plenty of resources and then you can actually get lost and none of them work or take you all the way through so what we did is uh, 
<laughs> we tried it out and then see what, what, what's the best sort of instructions and then we came up with this. So what we chose, uh, I used VirtualBox, I spun off a VM with uh, 16 uh, GB RAM and I installed Ubuntu 14.04 and then I uh, started following the instructions there. I mean, these instructions will work most of the time and then sometimes if it doesn't work, we'll tell you uh, where it may fail. So uh, sometimes you may have to make some configuration changes to your machine. Uh, in, if you go through the document, it will tell you, you know, create this to user and things like that. So uh, go complete that and then you clone this repository. So uh, do a git clone on the URL and what you get is a, all the integration scripts for true installation that will work with the dev stack. Now, in this installation, we are specifically uh, choosing uh, dev stack to integrate with Tro. We can also integrate with, uh, you know, uh, in the production uh, level Tro. Uh, there are other commercial providers uh, from HP Enterprise and then Tesora who will uh, make the installation much simpler and easier. But here we have chosen to do uh, with the dev stack so that it's kind of provides a learning experience. So uh, do a git clone, it'll download the required scripts for true and dev stack. Now uh, some of the suggestions that you might want to, uh, you know, uh, get through your installation. Uh, first thing is make sure you set your proxies. So if you are behind the corporate wall, you will probably need proxies. Uh, and if grid protocol doesn't work for you, uh, change it to HTTPS. Uh, so what you do is uh, go to uh, tilde, pro integration, or wherever you did the git clone, go to scripts, and then edit the redstack.rc. Now this particular redstack.rc contains all the configuration information for you to get through the Tro and dev stack installation. So uh, I have a sample uh, code change there that will help you get there. So this clone uh, actually, uh, let me go back. So once you uh, have that script, then, uh, okay. Then you go to CD, true integration, and then run this red stack install. Now, uh, what this does is, you, know, it, you have the uh, Git repo, and then it also downloads the dev stack from the Git, and then it kind of brings up the whole uh, stack of all the services that dev stack comes up with. Primarily, this installation will bring up the three processes, the true API, true task manager, and the other uh, process that uh, is required for true. So uh, this will run for some time, uh, maybe half an hour or whatever, and then when you get a screen like this. So what happened when we were trying to install, we ran into other issues in terms of, you know, user permissions, and I suspect there is some kind of uh, a subtle bug uh, integrating Tro in, with reference to user permission. So I just manually went and uh, changed it <laughs> to get through that. So uh, once you get this, at least uh, you're sure that the installation went through fine. We'll validate it in subsequent steps more uh, in detail. So uh, at least it says that you have dev stack up and running and it gives you uh, access to the uh, dev stack URL. And it will also print the password. So this password is the one that comes with the redstack.rc. It's kind of fixed. You can actually change it uh, to whatever you want. So the next step uh, is to kickstart the build init image commands for MySQL. So uh, we are trying to uh, create a MySQL data store here uh, because that's the simplest uh, to get around, even though uh, you can work with uh, MongoDB 
or any other database as long as you can get the uh, image and then load it into Glance and then spin off and integrate it with the dev stack. So run red stack, kickstart MySQL. So in the same command, you can actually replace MySQL with the MongoDB or whatever. So once that is done, actually you'll get a screen like this. Uh, which, well, at least, at least to us, it says, okay, you're uh, on track, you've got all your stuff integrated into uh, this stack and throw. So, uh, so one thing that you, I guess you almost always run into errors. I mean, <laughs> I've not seen you stack running, you know, all the way to the end, you know, unless you start on a very clean installation. So you'll have trouble. So fix the errors. So which may involve, you know, you installing, you know, uh, the latest or the appropriate version of pip or the Python libraries, which by default, you know, uh, the script should take care of it. But just in case, should you run into errors. So one simple way would be, you know, to run unstack, which will clean up, uh, shut down all the processes. And then, uh, so all the dev stack process. And then uh, you run uh, clean.sh so that everything is cleaned up. Uh, and then you run your previous command that you're running previously. So uh, it'll bring up again if whatever process are not running. So now that you have uh, your trove and dev stack installed, uh, one thing is, okay, is the installation right? I mean, did I get everything set up correctly? So if you actually go through, uh, access the dev stack directory. I think that's something that the script creates when it actually uh, clones the dev stack repository. And then you source, so go to uh, see dev stack and then the source the OpenRC uh, resource file, pass your uh, username, project, and then the password. Now this password is the one that comes, it's kind of preset, preset for you in that redstack.rc file, and which you can actually change it to whatever you want. And then the simple, simple let's try the simple thing first, right? So run a trove list, which will actually give the list of data source. Now, in your case, when you're starting on a fresh installation, you, it, it'll, it's going to be empty. So, but we did something before, so uh, it kind of shows up uh, data source. Uh, so at least we have come this far, so let's take the next step. Uh, the next step, I think, so with the previous scripts that we run, it also creates the endpoints. Uh, uh, for uh, the services, now if you run OpenStack catalog list, it will actually show you the, uh, the list of services that are uh, provided, and then you can see that uh, Trove is listed here. And then it has got a, a public uh, API URL. So uh, I think so we have come this far. Uh, for, for some, I mean, I'm going to post this uh, slides, uh, or if you can give me your email, I can send it to you. So, the simple thing what we'll do is what? We'll create a database. So what I do is I, sorry, I create a data store. So what I do is throw create, I give it a name, and then followed by the flavor and the volume size. So I'm not giving any uh, data store name, uh, the type, which is by default it picks up uh, MySQL, because I have only one. So the moment you run that, you'll see you'll get a response, something similar to this. Uh, the two things that I would uh, not uh, want to really observe are you know, the ID, of course, and then the status. So it's in a build state as of now. So it, it may take a couple of minutes for the uh, data store to get live. So uh, what you can do is do a trove show, and then you just give the ID, and it's, it runs going to give you the latest status on that. So uh, 
actually, I want to give a demo of uh, some of this, what uh, I'm doing, so you can actually see what it's doing. And then we'll also go through the configuration files and things like that. So this gives you uh, the complete status of your database instance. Uh, you observe that the status becomes active. And if there is any error in you know, creating the instance, it's going to, uh, you need to access the log files and then find out what's, what's gone wrong. So now that we have created an instance, database instance, let's create a database and let's connect to it. So the way uh, you do it is uh, use a trove database create command, and then followed by the ID of the data store, which we created here. And then give it a name. So I'm going to give it like my first database, or whatever. Now uh, you also need to create a user uh, to access that. So right now, uh, so what you do is do throw user create, and then you reference the uh, database instance, and then your password, and then uh, give it a name, my first database. OK. Uh, now, uh, you have everything done. So now let's connect to the database. So you use a MySQL command, client, so give the username, password, and then the IP address. Now, uh, if you're wondering where you got the IP address from, you have IP address here. So behind the scene, uh, a mesh VM is spun off. So it goes to Nova. So if you actually type Nova list and then you grep for this, you'll actually find this instance too. So you connect to the database, and then you can see that the database that we created uh, is visible there. So uh, let's see the, the configuration. So you might want to you know, configure uh, all the three services. And where do you find this configuration information? So you have, so all the configuration is under the host slash etc tro. Now, in production, typically what happens is all these services are installed on the controller. So if you have like three controls, you have this, all three of them running on the controllers. And uh, so if you want to modify, you go to each controller and then modify a configuration file under the slash etc tro. So the tro conductor is a configuration for the conductor service. And then the tro.conf is a general configuration for the API. Uh, and then you have the same thing for the task manager. And there's also a config file, throw guestagent.conf. Okay, so uh, this config is not used by the host. This is actually uh, passed into the guest image. So when you create a data database instance, it creates a, a guest image. So it's the request goes to Nova, and then that's where uh, this file would be sitting. So, uh, so for our Tro installation, so by default, uh, we are using Nova networking. However, uh, if you want to choose Neutron instead of Nova, then you have to make the following changes in the local.conf file. Now, once you do that, then you have to rerun the whole stack again. Uh, but I just noticed that uh, in the most recent version, there's actually even a simpler way of doing this, but which I'm going to show it to you in the first part of the demo. Okay. Uh, so sometimes, you know, your instance may end up in an error state. And then uh, you have to find out what's happening, right? So the way you can do that is uh, go to uh, slash opt stack logs, and then uh, on the host, or, or if it's on the controller, 
So you'll find that. And then you can access the log files and see where your uh, system is failing. And as with all uh, OpenStack product uh, CLIs, you always have the debug option. So uh, I would always, you know, if I think there's anything wrong, uh, just try the debug option and you'll see actually what's happening underneath. And that's a very uh, useful tool to uh, debug. So uh, this is where your uh, logs are, and this is how they look like. Now, sometimes uh, you might see that the NOAA is not reporting any error, but that your database instance is in error state. So what you can do in that case is you can do uh, log, log on to that corresponding instance, the NOAA, the VM, and then check for logs. So the way I would do, do SSH, so in our uh, situation, uh, the keys are automatically created in underneath, so you don't have to worry. I just uh, SSH Ubuntu and then the IP address, and it will just take me there. And then access the var log tro. And uh, remember, we briefly talked about the tro guest uh, in the config file uh, for the controller. So you can also have, you can also check the uh, tro uh, guest dot log file. And Specifically, if you have errors before launching the guest agent, they are under var log, upstart, true guest dot log. So this is where uh, the log is. Uh, sometimes you can also do, I mean, you can use, also use a simple nova console dot dash log and then the instance ID. So this instance ID is different than the instance ID that you get using uh, throw show. So you need to access the right instance ID. So there's more information uh, at this uh, URL. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change my screen and see if I can access. OK, I don't know how to make it show here. That's Sorry, that my screen that's froze. Uh, give me a second. Just give me a few minutes. Oh, my VPN went down. What happened here? This one. Give me a few, uh, give me a minute, I'll reconnect my VPN. Uh, hopefully we can get the demo going. So in the meantime, if anyone has any questions on the installation configuration, we can take the questions. In a production environment, do you recommend doing it on the controller nodes, the trove, um, uh, the whole trove stack, or would you like to do it on like a separate VM, or is there any guidelines for that? So, a typical production, I would say, uh, more like a, uh, doing on a controller node, and we, we have a demo on the horizon part also. Okay, go ahead, please, if you have any other questions. Yeah, that's just one minute. Do it in a VM? Have, you, have you guys tried to do it in a VM, maybe separate VM, not to um, go into controllers? Have you tried that? Can you please repeat the question, sorry? Have you, have you tried putting the trove into a separate VM other than controllers? So that, the, the demo what we are going, uh, doing is a uh, um, typical VM, but uh, the controller node uh, we, do, we don't have at this point now. But uh, we recommend the production in the counter controller nodes. Okay. Yeah, Great. you are audible. Uh, question. Uh, does Truth allow to configure which storage will be used for database 
for example, I have several uh, Cinder backends. I want uh, a particular database to be resides on uh, SSD pool. Can I control this? Uh, can you please repeat the question? So you have a backup on the Cinder? Not backup. I have multi backend. Multi backend. Yes, I have, let's say, SSD pool, and I want so that how do you get this, this specific this window there. This specific database will resize on my SSD pool. Can so, I control this? So if you have a database, a particular database, you can resize with support. So if you are if you are talking about a resizing a database, we can support. Say uh, you have a database of say one gig. Uh, we always support increasing the resize. We cannot decrease the size. Say, for example, uh, in this case, uh, one size a gig. If you have a backup, and if you wanted to resize to two gig, that's fine. But if it is below one gig, we don't support. No, my question was uh, not about resizing. I have two pools of disks, let's say SATA and SSD. Mm -hmm. Can I control on which pool my database will be built? Which pool you mean to say? Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll take the question later maybe. Okay, uh, I, have one, I have one more question. Um, is there a, an API uh, that Trove has that can be integrated in uh, Horizon. So Horizon is actually comes up here. We we don't have the we don't have the uh, uh, demo part. I think we missed that part. Actually, um, uh, it is it is there already. So what I'm saying is all the commands that you show for creating and and checking status of our database is that also can be done from Horizon. Actually, yes. uh, let me, actually, uh, the Horizon version for. Uh, Throw, but the, on the default version that you get to DevStack doesn't have all those features, all the features, all the features. But the Tesoro or our other providers uh, may actually provide a much better user experience in terms of that. So, so basically, we, there are some products. Even the HP has a product uh, through that one. You can create, you can resize. Uh, uh, you can increase the volume size and all those, those can be done. I just wanted to relay uh, the question that he asked. I also had the same question. I think, you know, can, when you're installing, when you're creating a new data store, let's say MySQL or MongoDB, and you have a choice of st storage, you know, SSD versus SATA or whatever, in Cinder, mm -hmm. can you choose that I want to, for Mongo, I want to go SATA, for MySQL, I want to go, you know, SSD? Let me have the answer to this question. I'll get back to you that one. Well, actually, uh, uh, that's uh, too complex a question for us to answer, honestly, because uh, we concentrated on basic stuff of, you know, uh, installation and configuration and other things. Now, I think if you talk to any, uh, guys who deal with production version, I think uh, they may have a better answer. Well, uh, so uh, I'm kind of trying to get some I demo. Think, I think uh, you have some question. Yeah, go ahead. Voila. Yeah, my, my question is very simple. So in your experience, what's the biggest database size that you are integrated? Have you ever integrated Troll with uh, Oracle? So uh, we have uh, done a lot of things on the MySQL and uh, Mongo. So we have created, we don't have the production environment, but we have the test databases uh, creating with uh, 10 gig and all, above that also size, in the gigs only, not, not, more, not more than that, because we have the, the size was very, very small uh, uh, resources we have available. We have not tried the Oracle. We tried the Redis, we tried the HP Vertica, we tried uh, MySQL and uh, Mongo. Mongo with the clusters and uh, sharding, we tried the sharding also. Well, I was just waiting for the instance to get active. So uh, we were talking about uh, briefly about the configuration information. So uh, if you go to CD Tro,
So this is the file that actually uh, has most of the configuration information, uh, which you can actually modify. And briefly, we're talking about Neutron. So remember I was saying, uh, uh, by default, we are using no networking for this uh, true dev stack integration. Change that to true, and then you can set it up for, uh, to work with Neutron. And then uh, you have your var, sorry. And uh, here is where you have your uh, configuration file to configure your true services. Well, I guess the, we are close to our time. Any further questions related to installation configuration? Question. So uh, once you install Tro, uh, this service I'm assuming is accessible to your tenants, right? So anybody? Yes. Okay. And uh, when I create a Tro instance, can I also specify? I think that the questions that other people are asking is kind of critical, right? Because if I have a database, I want to make sure that my you know database is stored on a secure location, and not using ephemeral disk. Uh, when I'm creating a Trove instance, can I specify a volume, for instance, from sender? We can specify. Yeah, yeah. We can attach the volume. Yeah, you can attach the volume. Right. So that would probably answer the question for yeah. the other guys. Right. Uh, you know, okay. Uh, if so, uh, is there a CLI here, like uh, Trove? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, okay. Uh, let me. If you have Cinder attached value or something, we can do that once and you know, create them. Actually, I don't know how to scroll that. Yeah, actually, yeah, there is a, if you do uh, Tro help, uh, it'll actually give you a list of all the yeah. APIs that uh, you can use. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, guys. Thanks for listening. <laughs>